we're looking at creating a Google site to use as a student portfolio to show your evidence of learning, update things like your photos, your videos, and things like that to show your teacher, like, like an online book. Okay, just get started. So you need to Google Google. No, you don't. You need to Google Google Sites. And you need to click on New Google Sites. If you click on the other one, it'll go to the classic. Actually, I'll show you what will happen. So we go to the classic Google landing pages, which is what we don't want to do, okay? So even on the classic landing page, it says new. So go to new Google Sites. So this might look different on the iPad. If you're using iPad, use Safari at this stage. April 2020, Safari works the best. Um, but you can use Google Chrome, but you have to go to your um, little hamburger thing, click down in the browser and go to request desktop site. Okay. So we're going to start a new site from scratch or I simply want you to write in their blog. Okay, give the site a name. So I'm going to put up the top there, Mr. Thwaites. Um, where it says untitled site at the top, that's where your teacher will tell you what to put. So if you're in, say, year seven, I might get you to say seven, um, seven music and then your name. The top one will be for your teacher to tell you how to name it. And this one here is however you like to do Mr. Thwaites, yo, 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 doesn't matter what you put in there. Blog. Now, on the MacBook, there's a really cool thing, you just double click. Double click and you get a click wheel. Let's call it the click wheel. Um, the ones we use the most are embed, text, and upload. Let's just keep it simple today. So, we've got our blog, and then I like to, the first thing I like to put is a little text box, so I double click text, and I just go latest posts at top. So that reminds you, that reminds the teacher, and it gets you in the habit of making sure that your latest, latest posts are at the top. So with the date, you use the button down the bottom here. So I'm gonna click on the button. Always go year, month, day. Okay, so let's go 2020. Um, then we might go 04 for April, then 28 for the day of the week. It won't let you create the button until you put something here. So you can just put hi, doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna put there, doesn't matter or you can actually put a link that links out, but we don't want to do that for this particular thing. So we click, there's our beautiful button, uh, which we can make bigger. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. If you see already, it's already telling me that I can change it from filled to outlined to text. L actually, let's leave filled to start with, okay? Underneath it, I'm gonna click just underneath the bottom there. I'm gonna click a little text box in, and I'm going to say term to week two, enter, and that will be Tuesday. That way we've got a nice little organized box. Now, it doesn't look justified nicely, so I'm gonna click in it, select all, command A, and then center it. I could have a look at that maybe. We'll see, once we play with our theme, we'll have a look. Okay, then over here, if you look, if, you, if I double click and put another text box over on that side, you'll see that it's automatically creating the columns for me. Um, so if I just put some text in there, that's actually looking quite nice, okay? Also, if, if you don't want that there, you can see the button and that are attached. What I can do is click on it and there's a little uh, like drag handle there. I can drag that out and I can move things around. So, so now if I move that, see I've totally messed this up? Command Z, right? Just like we do in Word, Z, Z back to where I was before. Very happy with that, okay? I'm actually gonna write a bit of text in this, that looks wrong. Hello. Oh, capitals, but let's not worry about that now. Okay, so I've set that up. Then what I like to do is to create a second blog post. So rather than do all that again, I just click on the side of my cell. So I've got my top cell and my second cell. I just click on the word duplicate there. There's one in the middle and I'll create a new one. So I like to have a template at the bottom. Okay, let's duplicate a couple of those. And what I like to do, say they're real posts, and the one at the bottom, I can have as a template. So I might call that template. Okay, and then I can, do, when I make my new post, I copy that, take it to the top, and because this is a new one, I would then go and double click that, change that to the 29th, and then change that to say, Wednesday. So that way I'm, I'm having a sort of um, continuity of, um, design in my blog. Another thing I like to do too, every second post is a different color. 
Um, I click on my cell and then click on my palette. I can see emphasis. It's on regular at the moment. We've got emphasis one. It's quite nice and subtle. Um, if I go down to my next cell, I might put it on emphasis two. That's a bit strong. So what I tend to do is let's undo that. I always make my headings, let's we're going to make that one a bit bigger. Let's make it a title. And I will make that emphasis too so strong. Latest posts at the top. Um, then my top one there, I'll keep white. And then my second one, I will have as a nice emphasis one, just so that the, the eyes get a little bit of a resting point as we go down the page. So now that we've sort of, let's do it on that one as well. Okay, so. The blog's starting to look okay. So let's go up to our themes, and that's where we have our fun. So I can have a black blog, I can have a purple blog, I can click on my color palette, and I can move that around. I can maybe go a bit back a bit. It's quite nice, a bit strong on the eyes. Okay, so you want to find it one that's not too strong. It's quite nice. We've got that, and then the next step is to just show you two or more, three more little customizing things. So our header. We can change the header type to a cover, which is a bit big. I, I, I wouldn't use that unless it was your title page. Large banner, banner. I think banner is enough for a blog, or just title, but titles are a bit boring. So there, okay, now just click out of it, and then you can also see you've got the header type and change image. So I can upload any image I like there, but remember when you upload the image, you've got to make sure that it's not too busy to, to affect the text, or you might have text on your image to bring it in, and you don't want any text, you can do that too. Um, I'm going to select a standard Google image for my post. So let's say we find that one looks pretty cool, a nice little mi mixing desk. And there you go. And you can see that Google is adjusting for the readability right now. And it should change it. Oh, if you don't like that, then you can just click on that little button there. I like the dark, but since the, mm, yeah, so you've got to fiddle with that. that. Let's go reset. I'll just go back to the original for now. Okay, good. You can also customize these um, little title ones by the same way. We've got a blue theme happening, so let's go blue. I use that one a lot. And you'll see it's adjusting for readability right now. And Google goes, mm, magic. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so you can do that. You can even do it on these ones if you really want to. Um, if a teacher's gonna put a post in, quite often I will uh, do this and I will say, Mr. Thwaites, comments. I might leave comments on there, never delete teachers' comments if we make a post for you. Um, and I might create a different, a certain color for every time I post a post for you. So that way when your eyes are resting, you go, oh, that's Mr. Thwaites' post, that's my post, that's my post. So the embedding of the videos um, is another thing. So I And so what I simply do is I've got the YouTube link where we go to my Google site, and this is so easy. It's, you're gonna go, wow, I'm gonna say, Mr. Mr. Thwaites, comment, please listen to this today in your mindfulness meditation session. Okay, just underneath it, again, double click, the word embed, and I go paste. You just leave it, you set it paste, oh, there it comes, excellent, done. That's how easy it is to embed videos. Okay, and it's the same. If you've got a Google Drive link, you just grab it and it'll do the same thing with your Google Drive link. But remember with the Google Drive videos that you must make sure that the file is shared with everyone with the link before you embed it. Okay, that's really important. Uh, and one thing I always, always, I always, always paste the link in there as well. Because sometimes the embeds don't work or they lag and they take forever if you've got too many clips on one page type it in there and then you, the person you, you can just click on the link if they don't want to watch it on your page. So we go to the word publish. Um, it's called Mr. Thwait, yo, yo, yo. We don't really want to do that, but I'll just leave it. I press publish. So it brings up a little drop down arrow now and we go to view publish site. And there you go. That's how anyone else will see your site. If you have a look down the bottom here, there's a little little writing tool. Only you will see that. You'll think, oh no, they can edit my site. No, if you are logged into your Google account and it's your website, you get that there. So that's really nice because I can simply click on it and I can click go straight in and edit it if I'm logged into Google, okay? So that's a nice little option to have. Okay, so that's how we do it. We've got the publish there and we've got the uh, view 
publish site there. If you unpublish it, it does not delete your site. All it does is stops having the front end. So you, you can still have your back end, but the front end disappears. There's no, no, one other thing that you may have to do, which is to um, share with others, and the teacher might ask you there. And, you, and that's it, and that right now, that is giving Mr. Thwaites editing rights. So that is, I think you need to give your teacher editing rights, you have to trust your teacher, because um, they will more like to put comments in there and maybe help, not do the site for you, but maybe help you with a few things. It's quicker than doing email barrages back and forward, when you can just simply either put a note in there saying, oh, by the way, you forgot to date this thing here, can you please do that? All right, good luck with it, and, um, I think that's basically it um, and good luck.